watch this art cart, you'll notice that the color that each glaze will fire to is on that little picture there with the name of the glaze. Notice how sometimes the glaze doesn't match up with what it's going to look like when it's done. So for example, whoa, where are you? See Miss Green? It looks gray, but this will actually fire to this really pretty like light green color. So don't pay so much attention to what it looks like inside the bottle, but make sure that you're looking and choosing your glaze according to the picture. Larkspur is purple, kind of like a dark purple, and then royal purple is a little bit more of a purpley pink color. Uh, when you're coming to get the first glaze, you're only taking one glaze at a time. You are going to find the kind of glaze that you want to use. You're going to make sure that it is the color that you know that you want to use. Then I'm going to just grab the first glaze in that category. Boys and girls, check the label to make sure the label matches the color of the glaze that you want to use. When you pick up your glaze from the tray, do not pick it up from the lid. Why not, Mrs. Snyder? Because a person, a not very great person, before you might not have screwed the lid on tightly. And inside this is glaze that is very expensive. We want to make sure that we don't have any spills or accidents. So when you pick up the glaze, do not pick it up from the lid. Pick it up from the front or the sides of the bottle. Take your glaze to your table and we'll talk about what you'll do with it there. station set up, my placemat, water, my glaze, my vessel, um, a paper towel, so get some paper towels, and then decide on your brushes. This is small, medium, large. Maybe you want all three. Maybe you just uh, choose two. So you need some brushes of different sizes. So boys and girls, when we start glazing, we're actually going to be glazing from the bottom of our vessel towards the top but we are not glazing the bottom bottom. The reason why is because, um, remember that the, the clay, or sorry, the glaze is like glass, and so if there's molten hot glass here, it gets stuck to the shelf below it. So we are not glazing the bottom of our vessels. It's very, very important. So to start at the bottom, the best way to do it is to turn it upside down because now I can access this first row to be able to glaze it. So I'm gonna choose a brush that would fit that area just to make sure, oh, that one looks like the right one. Every time when I have my glaze, the first time I open it, I need to mix it, but I don't wanna get the glaze all the way up my brush because that just wastes the glaze plus it's gonna get messy. So I'm just mixing it. Um, then I wanna wipe off a good portion of it because I really don't need a lot and glaze is very very expensive so I don't want any drips anywhere I shouldn't have glaze anywhere except for on my vessel the best way to glaze it is to put my hand inside of it so I can turn it slightly and then I'm just going to go back and forth glazing the section that I want to glaze I need to make sure that every little white spot is covered so sometimes I have to push the brush like this into any little sections. You do not want any white spots remaining. Okay, so you're just looking to do maybe one thick-ish coat, maybe two light coats, and it dries pretty fast. You'll start seeing the difference in the colors as it starts to dry. Okay, so that's how we're gonna glaze. You would glaze one whole section, or maybe you're doing everything the same color but there can be no white and once I feel like I've made that entire section then I can uh, wipe off the excess before I close it and then talk about returning this glaze before I get a new color and keep going after we glaze the complete outside of our vessel then we'll talk about doing the inside First thing I want to do is get as much glaze off as I can back inside the container. 
clean off your brush, you guys, make sure that you really kind of push it onto the bottom of the water container. Our goal is to make it super duper clean so that when we go into a new color, it's not gonna mix. Um, notice I'm using the paper towels to dry it. You can always go outside and get new water from the sink if, you, if your water gets really gross. So that will help not mix the glazes. Dump the water, get a new one. When you're returning a glaze to the cart, check to make sure that the name matches the place where you're putting it. Set it down where it goes in its little column. Then you can choose a new color, making sure you always pick it up from the sides, never the top. Once you've glazed the outside of your vessel, you are welcome to glaze the inside. Uh, for those of you that have a very narrow vessel, I would only glaze the little section that your brush can touch. You don't need to go too far down, so just a little bit along the rim, especially if the opening of your vessel is very small. Okay. Um, another option if you don't want to add a color is we have clear glaze. So you can ask Mrs. Snyder about that. Clear glaze just looks really nice and it'll just make it look really nice and shiny. Before you bring it up to me and tell me that you're done, check to make sure there are no white spots. Even those tiny little white spots, you want to make sure that you get them with your brush. Check the bottom too. If you get any glaze on the bottom, get a little paper towel or sponge and you can make sure that that is totally cleaned off so there is no glaze on the bottom whatsoever. Remember, you want to glaze every white spot. Make sure you clean your brush really well between colors and don't pick up the glaze from the lid.